All right, what's good everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Oliver and today we are going to be breaking down a spec ad I created for Xiaomi for their Mi Band 5. If you guys haven't checked it out already, I'm going to play it right now and afterwards we're going to jump right into the breakdown. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the ad. Now let's talk about the gear I used for the video. This is a motorized Lazy Susan. It cost me about 50 bucks. I'll link it down below if you wanna buy the exact same one. Essentially, at the click of a switch, it will start spinning. And yeah, that's pretty much it. For the background, I used this. This is a cheap piece of paper that I purchased from the dollar store. I essentially just leaned it against the wall and I placed the Lazy Susan right here and that kind of just held it in place and it stopped it from moving around when we're filming. So for the tripod, I basically just used a newer tripod. It doesn't matter what tripod you have, as long as it holds the camera up, that's all that matters. But if you really wanna know which tripod I use, I'll link it down below to the exact same one that I have. So let's talk about lighting. So the light I used in the video was the same light that I'm actually using right now as my key light. It's by a company called Mount Dog. This one comes with a soft box two bulbs and a stand. For 50 bucks, nothing beats it. I'll link it down below as well. Moving on. For the underwater shots, I used a fishbowl. Now, I don't recommend using a curved or round fishbowl because it kind of distorts the image. If you're looking for the best quality, get a flat fish tank or a boxed or a square fish tank. Do not use a bowl, but and this is the only thing I had lying around. The fishbowl worked for me. Finally, let's talk about camera. So the camera I use is the Sony a6500. Now you don't need a high-end camera that shoots 120 FPS. Most of the shots in the video was shot in 30 FPS. And the reason why is because the Lazy Susan rotates really slowly. Because of that, we can get away with 30 FPS and it looks like it's in slow motion. And all we have to do is speed up the clip. You don't need 120 FPS unless you have lots of like particles shooting out water droplets. But depending on what kind of product videography you're trying to pull off, you may not need 120 FPS. So all the gear I just talked about adds up to just under like 200 bucks. It's really affordable, especially if you compare it to like Rhino or Edochrome, which their bundles cost anywhere between 1700 to 2700 bucks. Anyways, enough talk about gear. Let's talk about how to set up our shot and create some cinematic footage. In order to achieve a top-down lighting effect, I used duct tape and a clamp. However, a C-stand is probably preferable, but no one would know behind the scenes. All right, here we have a green screen leaning against the wall and the Lazy Susan is holding it in place. One thing to keep in mind is to have some distance between the object and the wall as you are trying to minimize the amount of green bouncing onto the subject. The first time I was attempting this, I used a green cover over the Lazy Susan, thinking it would result in a better mask. However, a lot of the green would end up reflecting back onto the object. If you were to do it like this, you'll find that later in post, you'll see that the chroma keyer will mask out part of the object, which is undesirable. When it comes to placing the object, you want it to be elevated. The reason for this is because it will make things much easier later in post when you are masking out the object. Now for the raining effect, I used a spray bottle, which will create a nice and even droplets. Quick side note, when you're doing product videography, always use manual focus. It will result in a much more professional look. So for the underwater shot, I brought the camera as close as possible to the bowl and I dropped the smart band into the bowl easily a good 10 times until I got a shot I was happy with. Now let's get into the editing. So I just wanna mention that it doesn't matter which editing software you use, whether it's Premiere, Final Cut, or DaVinci Resolve. 
I just personally use Vegas Pro 17. Once you have your clip open, drop the chroma keyer onto it and using the eyedropper, select the green screen and you'll see that it will mask out most of the green. Unless you lit your scene perfectly, you'll most likely have some imperfections in the mask. To get rid of it, play around with the low and high threshold. Make sure to use the show mask function as it will show you which parts are masked out and which ones aren't. So what we want is the white to cover our object and everything else around it to be black. The next step is to mask out around the watch. I've already masked it out before. It will look different in each editing software, but the principle is the same. One tip is to not mask out every single frame. Set a keyframe mask every five frames or so. That way the software would automatically try to fill in the gaps between those five frames. However, you may still have to go back in between those frames and make some minor adjustments. If you're still having some imperfections in the mask, what I did was add some color curves as well as some brightness in contrast. This will depend on your clip, but lowering the brightness may help with that. To create those rotating movements, go to the position and add a position keyframe at the beginning and at the end of the clip. If you expand the keyframe at the beginning of the clip, you'll make the object smaller. And by rotating it, you'll create this very nice spiral shot as the object rotates towards the camera. On a side note, if you are shooting in 1080p, try not to zoom in past the original set keyframe as the image quality will begin to lower. The Sony A6500, which is the camera I use, is able to shoot in 4K, which allows me to be able to zoom in 400% and still retain HD quality. Anyways, once you are finished, you'll have something that looks like this. In order to pull off the next shot, I laid the smart band on its side. Make sure to have the camera dead on as if you are slightly off, it will rotate side to side. After following the same steps of masking out the green screen, you'll have a shot that looks like this. In order to make it upright, we will rotate the position keyframe so that it will look like it's standing upright. One thing I should mention is to set the keyframes to smooth, slow, or fast. This will add a nice effect between the keyframes. The underwater shot I had to be a little clever as when I tried to use the chroma keyer to mask out the smart band, it did not look good. So what I ended up doing was using the color curves, I lowered the shadows of the image until only the bubbles remained. Grabbing the first shot we edited, I played around with the position keyframes to make it look like it was dropping into the water. And then I placed the bubble shot on top of the clip and I set the timeline composition mode to add. In order to make the text appear as the watch is dropping into the water, I placed the clip of the text underneath the smart band clip and masked out each frame as the smart band watch passed over the text. Once you have done all of this, you'll have a shot that looks like this. For the other shots where it looked like the smart bands are doing some kind of synchronized dance, all it is is position keyframes and timing to the music. So definitely play around and come up with some creative movements and you'll end up with a cinematic ad that may look like this. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon. Like, comment down below on what you guys want to see next and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.